Well, we're calling this one go in the Coronella. But I guess the interesting thing is, well, we don't actually make it there. However, there's a story behind it, and I guess it's worth telling. So if you stay tuned, I'd love to show you what it'd look like. What does it look like when somebody says to you, do you want to go to a place called Coronella? Well, it's very possible that it might look something like It's gonna be, well, it's Alex's boat, so obviously we're going with Alex. So where are we going to, Alex? Coronella for the weekend. Coronella? Oh, Where's Coronella? Uh, halfway between here and Phillip Island on the eastern side of the bay, we're gonna have a nice sail down. Two boats on the water to race and there's three stars, so how good is this? Sounds like an interesting journey. There's a couple more boats heading down that way too. Boomerang 20, kind of popular. There's a fishing boat that certainly ain't going to Coronella, or if it is, not going with us because we are sailing. Thought that maybe we might be alone in going to Coronella. Well, would be wrong, because there's another boat or two on its way. So. Here. Hello, Julie. Hi. Ah, Julie. Ah. Filming you. Where, filming me. where are we going, Julia? We're going to the end of the world. The end of the world would be Coronel. Hello. You've got a very important job. What are you up to? That's holding the boat. <laughs> yeah, very. Don't let it float away. And where are you going to today? <laughs> Not so much. Right, you guys ready? It was certainly at this point, I was pretty well convinced we were going to Coronella, as was everybody else. And if you take the journey from Warneet around French Island to go to Coronella, it looks something like this. And I guess if there's one thing that's going to stop you from getting to Coronella, going around French Island to the left, it is the hump. The hump is a very, very, very shallow piece of water that can only be negotiated pretty close to high tide, depending on what your draft is on your boat. The hump is a piece of water that a lot of boats have hit the bottom on, and thankfully it is mud. And we realise at a certain point in our journey around French Island that we probably were not going to make it. So the tide was turned, and we turned to the right rather than the left, and headed down towards Hastings and Sandy Point, which in fact looks a little bit more like this. And if there's something I guess I have learned from my somewhat brief sailing career, it is that a vast amount of the time when you don't have somewhere that you have to go and are generally just wanting to go where you want to go, that the weather is the most determining factor on where you end up. And you might notice from this map, we didn't exactly take the easiest route to Hastings. In fact, we bypassed it quite a bit, did a bit of a loop and came back again. But when you get weather that is so superb that it pushes your boat along at a good six to seven, maybe even eight knots with the tide behind you, it gives you no excuses to stop. And it just makes you want to get out there and enjoy what the weather has to offer. In the eyes of people that enjoy sailing, Western Port is a fantastic sailing ground. It's not fantastic because it's necessarily the easiest place to sail, because in a lot of ways it's not. It has shallows, it has currents, and certainly it has large tides, anything up to three metres, maybe even a little bit more in some areas. But boy, it'll teach you a lot about what inland waters have to offer.
And I guess if there's one thing that's better than getting out there by yourself, or maybe getting out there as an individual boat, it's getting out there with a whole stack of other boats. And maybe you're finding yourself getting to a destination where you can all get together and enjoy each other's company over a few drinks, or maybe even a barbecue. And I suppose maybe we were going to Coronella, but we ended up at Hastings. And the picture looked something like this. Wait till Vinny's doing the video. It's at moments like this that you realise that in the beautiful world of sailing, there are no two boats that are exactly the same. Every boat's been engineered by its owner to fit the world that they wanted to fit into. A trip up to the local cafe, a couple of cappuccinos, and then we're back on the journey once again to head back to Warneet. The wind took us back with barely a tack, blowing solidly across the port side of the boat. A solid 15 odd knots, pretty well the entire journey. And it blew us without hesitation, pretty well straight to the warning channel. At this point, of course, we get to a point where we can no longer navigate our way in under sail. Well, not doing it in a hurry anyway. So the sails come down, the motor goes on, and we move our way up towards where the yacht club sits. At the end of every trip, of course, the boats need to come out of the water. They need to be unpacked. And it's amazing how much of a mess you can make of a boat over one night. The boats need to be cleaned, of course, and put back into their rifle park. I feel like this was a pretty good trip for everybody. I feel like it was thoroughly enjoyed. And I feel like the reality that maybe we were reminded of on this journey is that irrespective of where you think you want to go, sometimes you don't always get there, but it makes absolutely no difference to the reality, which is you're still going to have a bloody good time if you want to. And don't ask me why, but I thought I would finish this video with a couple of delightful welcoming words that I got from my dog when I got home.